Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Going Live with Global Science Show. My name is Sam, how are you today? Um, what week are we on? We're on episode nine, so that makes it week five of uh, our live streams, Going Live with Global Science Show. Um, the days like absolutely drag, but the weeks fly at the moment, like just weeks are really flying by. Um, welcome. Um, if you've not joined us before, this is a half hour chat over a cuppa. I've got my mug of motivation today. Um, needed it, like a lot of things going on, like fitting too many things into not enough time. Um, but I'm really happy to spend a half an hour with all of you and with our guests today to talk about who they are, what they do, and why they're awesome. Um, so today we have a, a lovely guest. We're going to Wales um, for our guest today. I'll get them on. Say hello to Dr. Emma Wynell. Hi, Sam. Got my cup of tea, nice bit of English breakfast tea um, around lunchtime. Mm. So yeah, joining you from Cardiff today, and it's actually quite nice. You Ooh. dropped out for some reason. You're back. Mm. You're fine. Um, well, back. I'm just saying it's quite sunny. I'm nice in Cardiff today. It's sunny. really nice here as well. Um, like the sun has decided to grace us with its presence. But I'm sitting with the curtain shut, so I can't see it right now. Oh, uh, that's sad. Just it's to get the best light, you know, like otherwise I'll just be watching. You're a pro. Out. I'm trying to be, I'm trying <laughs> to be learning from the best um, about like, shut your curtains, it'll help. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome, um, it's nice. nice and so I'm going to ask you the question I ask everybody uh, when we start is who are you and what do you do? Mm, yeah, so I'm Emma. I am a lecturer at Cardiff University, so spend kind of most of my time doing that. And then I also do lots of science communication work in my kind of spare time. You're saying, weren't you, Sam, about fitting too much in to too few hours. Um, but yes, I do lots of science communication work um, in my kind of free time as well. Um, I do lots of work on the brain and it's Brain Awareness Week this week, um, but also on genetics and other kind of biosciencey type stuff. So that's me. Pretty cool. Brain Awareness Week, we're going to go on to that in just a little second. Um, but uh, next question is always, how have you spent, like, we, I'm only get, hopefully going to only be able to ask this for another few months. How have you spent your pandemic? Ah, uh, yeah, it's been long, hasn't it? Um, so we adopted some cats during lockdown. Um, so we were just having a chat before when we talking about how pets and pets are so important to many of us. And if you can't have a pet, then, you know, I can send you photos. <laughs> um, so, yeah, pets. So looking after the cats, spending my pandemic doing that. I have mastered the sourdough um, after quite a battle, I think. Um, although that was probably in lockdown, too. I was kind of jumped on that bandwagon a bit late. Um, and, yeah, I think, you know, spending a bit more time looking after myself probably hopefully um watching kind of tv that's a little bit mind-numbing um and yeah so it's it's been quiet but you know we're we're getting through hopefully and as you say sam hopefully not too much longer and in terms of like the sourdough like i just never able to do it because for me it is like having another pet like it's you need to feed it every day and like I struggle with house plants as much as like like they are not difficult, but I really struggle to make sure they're okay. Um, but what would you say? What's your mind numbing TV? Ah, uh, so there's lots. Um, I really enjoy Line of Duty, and that's coming back, isn't it? It's not necessarily mind numbing. It actually takes quite a lot of brain power. Um. I think. Um, I'm into RuPaul's Drag Race, love that at the moment as well. Um, and yeah, lots of, oh, um, The Dog House, if you haven't seen that. So that is um, basically going around a dog adoption centre and trying to match dogs that need homes with people that would like dogs. I think that's your type of TV, Sam. I think. Yeah. Like what, where are you watching that? Like on what? 4OD. Yeah. Nice. Yep. All on there. Uh, I will definitely be checking that out. Yeah, yeah I'm happy too, right? And it's it's all good. So yeah, dog, dog, the dog house. It's called. Nice. Um, you also mentioned about getting cats over um, over lockdown. We we managed to only buy well two other pets, but we got a pair of rats, which have been 
like a really nice addition to the household. Like people would never have thought, or I would never have thought, rats are a good pet. You should get rats. And like since getting them, couldn't live without them now. Like they're just so nice. Oh really? Uh, they're, they're like miniature dogs. Like they're like really intelligent mm -hmm. and they they are really inquisitive. They want to know what you're doing. Um, they'll come and like if we're like playing video games, they'll watch us playing video games. Or yeah, they're totally different sort of pet than I ever thought they would be. Wow. Maybe you so, could train them out on the video games. Well, I, we could definitely train them on things because they're incredibly clever. I'd love to get them to do things like tightrope walking, which you can get them to do. Yes. Like, um, let's start a little circus for the rats. Anyway. Um, I'd watch that. Um, so that's what you've been doing kind of pandemic-wise at home. Um, what about when it comes to uh, work and whatnot? Has, you, you've been mostly home. Like shoot. Yeah, so working from home, but also doing um, teaching on site. So we are still running practical classes. Um, so practical classes are a really important part of science degrees, um, but that isn't the same throughout the UK, actually. It, it does depend um, based on the kind of local guidance and regulations. Um, and also I've been trying to make my online teaching as interactive um, as possible. So, you know, we understand it's really hard time for students at the moment. Um, all students, but particularly maybe first years who've travelled um, and are now in new locations with a, quite a minimal support network. Um, so trying my best to, to do that. We've had kind of online discos to start lectures, um, demos, polls. And I think a lot of that work does kind of come back to my stuff on science communication. So, you know, having that background and applying that to my teaching. Um, because teaching can be engaging and interactive. It does take work and, and thought and how best to, to do that. Um, but yeah, really good feedback um, from the students on that. And, you know, I think it's also important to recognise that some things haven't worked, um, but that's okay as well. I think, you know, everybody's in a situation where they're trying new things and some things work and some things don't. And, you know, that is okay. So I do take lecture song requests um to start off our lectures <laughs> so if anybody comes up with um a song request that's relevant to the lecture then that's you know double points um so a, a lecture on cardiac muscle we had total eclipse of the heart by bonnie tyler ah <laughs> nice oh i love that it's just a nice way to make it that little bit more unique than like yet yeah, another lecture isn't it um and yeah, it's absolutely. Really nice. So you're saying that it comes from like work in science communication. Um, what sorts of things do you do when it comes to psychom? Mm, yeah. So lots of kind of bits and pieces, really. So the talks that I would give um, normally in schools and at schools have now gone online. So talks in schools about um, the brain and brain health as well as brain disease. But also um, off the back of International Women's Day and um, Science Week as well, getting more people involved in science, getting kind of myself out there, talking to school kids about what scientists do um, what we look like and, and what we do, because I think there's lots of um, misconceptions around that. Um, so school stuff, some work with patient groups as well, particularly patients with um, brain diseases or disorders. Um, and I do bits and bobs of, of writing as well, um, just to kind of target different audiences. So a bit of a mixed bag, probably. And you've done a TED talk as well, right? Yeah, Before. TEDx talk um, a couple of years ago now, talking about, um, it's called the um, ethics behind your neurogenetics. So looking at some of the genetic factors around brain diseases, uh, looking at my family history of, of Alzheimer's disease, um and my story around that really um and answering quite important questions you know would you want to know about this genetic information if, if you got had the opportunity and going back to some of those tv shows that we kind of are watching at the moment aren't we there's some great stuff on the bbc around um dna testing and genetic testing um that stacy dooley hosts so i love stacy dooley um looking at the genetic information that we can find out now um, so I think there's probably a bit more to be explored around the support available for people who are going through that process and, and why people want to know about that information. Um, but a, an interesting documentary 
Yeah, and I think we're on, one is tonight, I think, nine o'clock. Um, plug, plug, plug. Um, but I think there's a few episodes now available. Um, looking at people's genetics um, in terms of their susceptibility to different diseases, but also in terms of their family history. So quite different things, looking at heritage versus disease, um, but some really interesting um, stories about why people want to know that information. Hmm. I've not heard of that one. I'm going to definitely have like that's you give me two recommendations for TV now. You're welcome. Um, like that's that's, <laughs> that's made that's made this worth it if nothing else. Like, <laughs> um, I have always been really interested in terms of TED talks, like TEDx talks about. Um, it's a very different style of communication because it's like full script and like everything's done in the right time at the right order. And it seems that like from my perspective, I think it. It sounds like hell. Like, um, like I don't deal well with like stick to the script and do it that way. Um, how was that? Like, let's yeah, so over. it was a little bit scary, I have to say. I mean, I think you mentioned kind of TED or TEDx, and people were like, ooh. Um, so th there was a lot of pressure. I felt quite a lot of pressure, I have to say. Um, and I did, I don't know, different people have different approaches to talks. I did script it to a degree but there was a little bit of flexibility in in what I um was talking about so yeah and I think an uh, interesting one for me because I shared my kind of personal story um so it was quite personal to me it was a little bit kind of emotional really um and I had kind of pictures of my family up there um so yeah that that kind of bigger picture about kind of doing it for them as well um but I got some lovely messages from people who had kind of family histories of different um, diseases and disorders of the brain, um, you know, saying it's really good to be talking about these topics, having those honest and open conversations. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right. So I know what you mean. It was slightly terrifying, um, but a really good thing to do. And I'm really glad that I did do it because, you know, at the time when I was invited to do it, I did. Kind of a sharp inhale of, of breath oh you know that's that's going to be quite scary and it was and i wish i hadn't worn the shoes that i did because it was a really slippery stage they make <laughs> you stand on a kind of red spot which was really slippery um but there we are it all went well in the end i hope oh no it sounds like some like yeah i think it sounds like it would be terrifying but also really rewarding so like a lot of different types of cycling really i guess is that they can be quite scary yeah, um, definitely. And I think that's one of the reasons I kind of do different bits of pieces of, of PSYCOM and lots of people talk about um, nerves around public speaking and, and talking. Obviously, it's slightly different now, isn't it? In that we're all in our spare room talking to a camera, which can be good and bad, I think. Um, but I do a lot of work around people being comfortable with, with what they're doing. And yes, challenging yourself and being kind of brave and, and putting yourself out there if that's what you want to do, but also doing things that appeal to your strengths and what you're comfortable doing. So, you know, doing stuff that plays your, your best suit really um, and that you are kind of comfortable doing. Because I would hate for anybody to feel that they had to put themselves in a position that was uncomfortable. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, right. Brain Awareness Week. Mm -hmm. It is Brain Awareness Week right now. Um, what is it and like how have you spent it? Yes, it is. Um, so Brain Awareness Week is happens every year and um, in March is all about raising awareness of the brain. Um, but importantly, I think this year more than ever, Brain Awareness Week means different things to different people. But for me, I think it's about raising awareness of mental health and well-being. And I think Brain Awareness Week provides a great opportunity for us to do that. Um, so I think, you know, in the pandemic, we are having more open and honest discussions about our mental health and well-being. Um, we know that more people have sought help um, for those services, which is great. But I think, you know, those are overstretched services that need more, you know, support, um, financial help, but, you know, more support generally as well. Um, so I think it's fantastic that more people are using those services, but we need more 
um, investment resource going into them, absolutely. So I have spent Brain Awareness Week um, doing lots around kind of social media. Um, there's some great social media, interesting stuff with the Federation of European Neurosciences, rolls off the tongue, um, looking at brain puns. I mean, right. a pun. <laughs> um, so that's quite fun. But also, you know, doing those schools talks and um, talking about what we can do to keep our brains um, healthy and also raising awareness um, of brain diseases as well. So a lot of the stuff around brain health um, is the stuff that, you know, we would encourage, you know, getting out. We were mentioning the weather, weren't we? And, and how nice it is and um, getting yourself out into those green spaces eating well and um, you know just looking after yourselves taking time out um, and you know giving yourself permission to watch those tv shows that's that's okay um and i think particularly you know we're living our lives at home at the moment aren't we and those boundaries between work and not work are so blurred at the moment i mean they were probably a bit blurred before but now more than ever um so yeah it's about you know taking that time for you as well, I think. Mm, absolutely. I am. Um, oh, sorry. Just checking. We've got comments coming in. Um, I have since we've moved into a new house, like just before Christmas, and in our old place, we were incredibly cramped and like both worked from the dining table and the one room that we then closed the laptops and then went and sat on the couch and it was right next to the workspace. And having that kind of separation now, because I'm in a room that is only used for work has done wonders for my mental health. Like having that kind of separation is so much better now. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that physical separation, but also with, you know, the digital world that we live in, you know, we're mm. all on our devices. If those devices are hooked up to work kind of stuff, that can be really, really tricky as well. So mm -hmm. someone said to me the other day, you know, they don't charge their mobile phone next to their bed anymore. They've bought an old fashioned alarm clock um and they charge their devices outside the room so yeah I, I haven't got there yet i should i know i should but is that actually doing it isn't it um so yeah i think that physical separation but also about kind of being accountable to ourselves you know and it's, it's okay to not answer emails if you're not working that's all right and you know those boundary settings really important for yourself but for other people as well you know we can't be 24 7 workaholics it's not good no, I'm really bad for that. I'm really bad for like managing to switch off. And I was saying to you that like today and tomorrow I'm gonna to try and just actually take a bit of a break. And I don't know that I actually will. I'm really bad at taking a breather. And I think that the pandemic has made that ten times harder for me. Mm. Um and I think it's the same for a lot of people. Um Yeah, I certainly fall into that camp not great at switching off i have to say um but you know i'm trying <laughs> trying yeah. to get a bit better <laughs> i think recognizing it is half the battle isn't it like knowing that yeah. you need to actually do something about it um so you you work in higher education and in academia and are very very passionate about science communication um sometimes it can be within within academia it can be quite hard to for some people to see the value in science communication, um, which we, we absolutely want to change. We want to, everyone to see the importance of it. Um, how do you think we could go about doing that? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's tricky and, and you're right, you know, it is a problem. Um, and I think this merge of kind of academia and science communication is, is an area that's absolutely needed, but how mm. we go about that is trickier. Um, I think ultimately it's about appreciating and acknowledging the, the value of science communication. I think sadly there tends to be a narrative that it's easy, which is absolutely not the case. You know, some of the most challenging things I've done are SciComm things, you know, going into schools, talking to four-year-olds about the brain and answering their questions. Um, I think some people with a very kind of academic um, background are maybe a little bit anxious and, and worried about psychom. So I try and do um, training around that, you know, relieving anxieties and, and having honest and open discussion. So, you know, I've spoken to professors before who get it, they see the value in science communication, which is great, but 
think that you know it's, it's not up to them it's probably down to more junior researchers which shouldn't be the case at all um but actually as you say acknowledging that and you know if we unpick that okay so why why is that and sometimes it is because they're worried they're scared you know they don't know how to talk to kids in, in a school you know they've maybe spent 30 40 years in an ac academic environment using academic language um so it is a skill you know dialing back you know talking to different audiences about science um so i think there's work to do around there i think there's also work to do around um the recognition of science communication in academia so whether that is um some of the work i've been doing around publishing work in science communication so almost speaking the academic language um in a way that appeals to my my science communication interests and also sometimes it's about um you know just just keep telling people you know that there is value in this you know it is important um and no it isn't easy but if we work together um then hopefully we can change it i think it's like the the key definitely is that collaboration isn't it like working with the people that are already heavily involved and are able to to guide you like so whether that's like um people like yourself or like the the pep teams that you have like public engagement professionals as well um like they're the best the best route to show you that you can actually do it yeah definitely yeah and i think you know science communication has such a broad remit and can be beneficial in so many ways so you know we look at things like um student recruitment it can be useful there um i mentioned teaching earlier you know those skills in clearly communicating a message are important for psychon but they're important for so many other things as well you know even meetings you know will all be in online meetings at the moment you know saying um what you mean and getting your message across you know that's still a very similar um skill set so i think it is about that collaboration and also not being afraid to ask you know some people will drop me a message and say you know i'd like to do this i just don't know how to go about it mm. and that's great you know sometimes you kind of don't know what you don't know if if you know what i mean so getting that started okay where do you start um that is the the first question isn't it really um and if people can help with that you know i'm involved in lots of different communities um but the sicom community are the the best friendliest most welcoming lovely people genuinely um so yeah i don't be afraid to to reach out and ask for help it was something that I actually like. Kind of, I before before coming on here, I was running a training session um, for kind of introduction to psychom, and like the, one of the things I ended it with was, if you're trying to break into the sector, which can feel really daunting for people, whether you're in academia or whether you're not, but you're really interested in it, is just get in touch with those psychomers that you like and that you find are really cool, because as you say, they're the, we're the friendliest of people um and always willing to help yeah it's it's difficult isn't it it's almost that kind of new group of people will you fit mm. in will you be mm -hmm. it's a bit like school i guess isn't it you know yeah. friendship circles um but you know we've never actually met in, in proper person real life have we sam but you know from the psycom world maybe we have i think we, we a, a big event at big i think we were we were definitely adjacent but never really oh. like spent a lot of time to, uh, in edinburgh for a little bit but um yeah there's so many people it's hard to know who you've actually met and who you haven't mm. um so especially many people that you think you know because you see them on twitter and you you yeah. know a lot about them um but yeah i think you know it is a lovely community um and people you know will go out of their way to help and that is yeah. you know in the world that we live in at the moment absolutely valued and you know really important and we really appreciate that yeah 100 percent um and a part of that actually um is a global science show that like you've taken part in it like multiple times and been like a really good cheerleader for it as well which has always been like massively appreciated um, um, no you're welcome i think at the moment it's about cheerleader it's a great word isn't it you know people that kind of build you up the people that back you your biggest supporters really um and yeah you know the global science show is awesome it, you know global science um but you know getting all of those communities involved that maybe wouldn't have before and you know the the spread of that from its kind of initial um start to what it is now and all of those people that have got involved you know the, the kids that get involved um oh i love it it's awesome 
And you also gave us one of the best like uh, videos as well with the egg splat. Um, <laughs> oh, the explosion! Yeah. Um, that must have been like almost a year ago now, right? Was that like the second or third show, maybe? Maybe, um, yeah, probably. Um, time goes so yeah, fast. I had to clean it up, though. And I didn't mm. have a cat at that stage. Okay, all right, okay. That would have been, yeah, not a good thing to have cats around. Um, right, it's 25 minutes in. Like, as I said, like the time goes so quickly when we're having um, so the last thing that I like to ask folk is if you had words of advice for people who are looking to get into science communication, what would be your best top tips? Mm, so I think don't be afraid to ask. Um, you know, if you never ask, you never know. And, you know, sometimes that might not pay off. And I think it's relatively rare where people don't go back to you. Um, but if that does happen, don't don't let that put you off. Um, also, you know, the, the world that we're living in at the moment, if somebody doesn't get back to you after, you know, a couple of weeks, don't be afraid to just drop them another message. You know, things get missed so easily at the moment. And more often than not, you'll probably have a very kind of embarrassed email saying, I'm so sorry, you know, I missed this. Because, you know, so much is going on in people's lives at the moment, you know, professionally and personally. Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid to reach out and, and ask. Um, and secondly, you know, have confidence in yourself I think you know that comes with time um and you know it, it comes with experience to a degree but you know there's still times where I think gosh you know I don't know if I can do this I don't know if I'm good enough to do this why have they asked me to do this why am I here what am I doing um so yeah having that kind of confidence reminding yourself why you want to do psychom is, is really important so why do you want to do this what is the aim um is quite important too no, mo motivation is something that I always come back to whenever I'm thinking about, whenever I have a bad day, I'm like, oh, I can't do this anymore. It's always thinking about, well, why am I doing it? And that always brings me back around to feeling like, today isn't, today's a different day, it'll be better then. And uh, we'll just get through it. Uh, thank you so much for coming to have a chat with us. You're welcome, it's been a joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and as I said to you before we start, it always goes so quick, like, how do we have enough to fit into 30 minutes, but we quite clearly manage it every time so easily. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and you, you've got your Twitter account in your name if people want to if people want to find out who you are, but I'm now going to use the power that I have mm. to remove you. So, oh, um, okay. Well, thank you. Thank it's been you a joy. I'm going to go for my lunchtime walk now and get a bit of fresh air and a bit of sunshine. Enjoy. See you soon. Thank you so much, folks. Um, another another uh, 30 minutes is gone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We've had like, a really good number of people watching live. Um, if you're watching live, hello. Um, if you watch back later, hi again. Uh, thank you so much for coming to, to watch what we're doing today. And if you want to be involved, you're more than welcome to, to sign up to, to be one of our guests. We've got guests up until the uh, start of June now. Um, so lots and lots of people when we're doing it twice a week. But if you want to be involved, you can send us a message on Twitter at Global SciShow, um, send us a DM, and we'll get you involved as a guest. We're back again on Thursday at 12 p.m. GMT um, with Dr. Jasmine Scarlett. Um, we'll be talking about uh, volcanoes, academia, video games, that sort of thing. It's going to be really good fun. Uh, otherwise, have a great day, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.